Britain in the Whitstable and Hearn Bay Herald, Saturday, November the 12th, 1892, is the following story. Some extensive seizures of contraband goods were made at Dill last week by the customs officials. At the Petty Sessions on Thursday, Edward Spratlin, grocer's manager, was charged with harbouring and receiving 43 pounds of manufactured and Cavendish tobacco, with intent to defraud Her Majesty's customs. Robert Day, boatman, was similarly charged in respect of nine and a half pounds, and Ernest Dean in respect of four and a half pounds. The cases were adjourned until Thursday next, and the treble value of duty being deposited, and the defendant submitted to bail. On Thursday the 17th of November 1892, the cases in which three defendants were charged with harbouring and unaccustomed tobacco were heard again at the Dill Petty Sessions. Dr Hardman defended in each case. The bench, after a lengthy hearing, imposed a penalty of the single value of duty, £15.7 seven shillings and 19 shillings cost in the case of Edward Spratlin, grocer's manager. £3.1 and 9 pence and 25 shillings costs in the case of Robert Day, boatman, and £2.8 and 3 pence and 19 shillings costs in the case of Ernest Dean, boatman. Robert Day, boatman and the head of household at 12 Silver Street Dill, was arrested and convicted of smuggling on several occasions. This account of Robert Day's smuggling was printed in the Eastbourne Herald on Wednesday, the 22nd of August. 1900 and in the Thanet Advertiser on the 1st of September 1900. Before the Eastbourne Borough Bench on Friday, Robert Day 32 of 12 Silver Street Dill, William Bailey 44 of 159 West Street Dill and Samuel Pritchard 47, a boatman of 21 Middle Street Dill, were charged on remand with being concerned together in unlawfully importing certain goods liable to duty. The boat observed coming ashore in Langley Bay and after watching for it for a considerable time the Coast Guard proceeded to the boat. The three men were sitting beside the boat having tea and when asked if they had any prohibited goods on board they answered no. The Coast Guard searched the boat and found a large concealment of duty payable goods from which he informed the local police and the three men were arrested. The long narrow boat in which they came here in, a dual galley punt, is now lying on the beach near the rocket apparatus house in Langley Bay and measures about 28 foot by 7 foot 6 inches. The boat is called the Dizzy and she has painted on her stern the name of the owner, K.C. Grigg Deal. The Dizzy, which has been seen on this part of the coast before, is not a new boat and her value has been roughly estimated at £40. Found on board were 40 boxes of cigars. 144 pounds of tobacco and two bottles of eau de cologne on which no duty had been paid. On the 15th of August in the borough of Eastbourne Mr Bedford from Newhaven prosecuted on behalf of Her Majesty's Customs and the prisoners were defended by Dr F. W. Hardman LLD of Deal. The defendants, it was stated, came ashore with a boat at Langley Point and the Coast Guard of the Eastbourne Station discovered the tobacco and cigars concealed as ballast, while the eau de cologne was in the locker. John River Upshaw, examining officer of customs, stated that he had received from Mr Fillery, the Chief Officer of Coast Guard at Eastbourne, a certain quantity of tobacco and cigars and spirits. He has ascertained that on the £25 of cigars, £63.14 ounces of plug and £44.7 seven ounces of other manufactured tobacco and the 134 gallons of perfumed spirit, the treble duty amounted to £155.1 one and sixpence. It was a Dutch tobacco of a very good quality, one of the best that could be bought in Rotterdam. The value of the plug tobacco, tobacco was two shillings a pound and the other manufactured one and sixpence a pound. Of the cigars, ten shillings and of the perfumed spirit, 17 shillings and threepence. The duty levyable being respectively on these four was four shillings and fourpence on the plug, three shillings and tenpence on the other tobacco, five shillings and sixpence on the cigars and 19 and a penny on the perfume spirit. 
The bench imposed the full penalty of £51.13 and tenpence on each defendant and three months imprisonment without hard labour. A second charge of having been on board the boat for the purpose of importing certain prohibited goods was preferred against the defendants and the mayor said in this case a conviction would simply be recorded. They were sentenced to three months in jail at Lewis. It was probably another factor of Robert Stay's career that caused his suicide in 1903.